So welcome to the higher voltage circuit build for the four digit Wemos Nixie clock. So the components we're going to be using for this part of the build are Q1 2N3906, a 2.2 microfarad 400 volt capacitor C13, a 390k resistor R4, an MC34063 and a socket, that's U4, a 1k resistor R3, a 2.2k resistor R5, a 680 picofarad capacitor C11, a, a variable resistor RV1, that's 5k, a 100 nanofarad capacitor C12, a 1N5819 diode D2, a UF4007 D3, a 100 hen microhenry inductor L1, a 0 0.18 or a 0 0.22 2 watt resistor R1, and a MOSFET IRF640 Q2. So, first of all, we're going to take the resistor R1 and place that in its location on the board. Uh, fold the leads over and then it should slot into the two holes very easily. They're very large holes. Um, so you'll have to flood them with solder to make sure that they uh, get soldered properly. So we trim it up. Make sure you keep the um, excess parts of the lead you cut off well out of the way. Don't put them underneath the board. So next we're going to put in the IRF640, uh, that's Q2. So we bend the leads over so that they're at a right angle and we place it into the board with the metal tab side facing towards the board. Um, we're going to tape it in place because otherwise uh, it will fall out and then solder the, the three junctions. Good, looks fine. So, solder the other two junctions. Trim up. Great. So, get rid of the tape and we're ready for the next piece. So, next, we're going to put in the two small ceramic capacitors. So that's C12 100 nanofarads, which has 104 written on it, and C11, which is the 680 picofarads, and that has 681 written on it. So fit them both in at this point. I choose to do it like this quite simply because once the socket and the MC34063 is in place, it's hard or harder to um, fit these in. So solder them up. Okay, looks good. And we'll, as usual, trim up. I'm doing two leads at once there. Okay, now we're going to put in the dip socket, the eight pin dip socket, and make sure that the notch on the socket lines up with the notch on the silk screen. Um, this didn't need any tape. Um, in my case, you might need to just tape it or blue tack it into place. So I'm just soldering a couple of the pins um, it looks like it's nearly okay I'll press it in while I reflow the solder and then we will solder the other six connections on, on the chip Great. we won't put the the chip in there yet we'll come back to that right at the very end so next we take R3, which is a 1K resistor, and we fold the leads over and we put it into its place next to uh, the socket. So 
now D2, that's the 1N5819. It's got a white stripe on it, and the white stripe goes into the pad with the square shape on it. Um, make sure that you get the 1N5819 and not the UF4007. Now the UF4007 comes later, so read the writing on this one, which is 1N5819, um, and make sure that the white stripe goes into the hole with the square profile. Trim up. So next we're going to put in the 2N3906, which is Q1. Um, the shape of the transistor's body has a flat side on it. Make sure that the flat side matches up with the flat side marked on the silk screen. Now I find it easier to do this. I solder one pad, then trim all three leads off in one go, and solder the other two pads at the same time. Great. So next comes The inductor, let's see how that fits. Oh, you know what? I'm going to put in R4 and R5 first um, because otherwise it will be hard to get in once the inductor's in place. So take R4, which is 390K, and fold the leads over and put that in place. Splay the leads out slightly to make sure it doesn't uh, fall out of the board again, and solder it in. There's some offcuts stuck to the snippers there. Okay. Next, we take R5, which is the 2.2K resistor, and that goes into the position next to R4. So trim up, and once we've done that, we can come back and we can put in the inductor L1, which is 100 microhenries. It's not a polarized component, but um, I'm going to tape it in place uh, just to make sure it doesn't fall out again. away with the tape. We're looking good so far. Okay, so next comes C13, the 2.2 microfarad 400 volt capacitor. Now this has a white stripe on it and the white stripe must go to the white half of the semicircle of, on the silk screen. Just holding it in place there, making sure it sits firmly so it's physically secure, and then we can solder the other lead as well. Next, the diode D3 UF4007. Again, it has a white stripe on it, white or silver, um, and that goes into the pad with the square profile. Okay, make sure the offcuts are well out of the way. So, now we're going to put in RV1, which is the 5K uh, Borns type potentiometer. I've put it so that the screw is uh, near the outside of the board. It doesn't matter. You can put it either way around. Um, so 
all the connections and we're good. So trim up the excess off the leads and get rid of them. And now we come to the point where we put in the uh, MC34063 into its socket. So we have to form the leads a little bit because they come from uh, the factory splayed. And we form the leads and put it into the socket. Again, making sure that the notch um, or the dot uh, is next to the notch side. And now we can uh, prepare to do the test. And for that we need some uh, input volts. I'm using 9 volts from a bench power supply here. Um, it's current limited, um, but it shouldn't be a problem if you don't have a bench power supply. Now if I can help hold the board still for a second. Uh, power is on, it's taking 0 0.03 amps, which is good. Now if I can find the test points, there it is. Okay, ground test point and the high voltage test point, and we're expecting some high voltage there. And we're in fact getting 180.2 volts. So um, we got lucky there, we don't need to adjust up the voltage for the moment. And that's the high voltage circuit build.